It's a beautiful spring day, and we're still searching for a larger horsepower tractor. So, on the recommendation of a viewer, we drove out to Martinsville, Indiana, to visit Tom Wood Outdoor Equipment. They have both Mahindra and Massey Ferguson, so two for one. Uh, we're interested in something maybe in the 35 to 50 horsepower range. Okay. As small a frame size as we can get within that range. Okay. Mahindra, so. Massey, either one? Yeah. Let's go on out. I'll show you some stuff. They got a lot of big mowers inside here. Yeah, we've got uh, skags, husqvarna, and uh, grasshopper okay. for mowers. We've had Mahindra for several years, and then we got Massey Ferguson late last fall. Okay, so, so you're just now starting in the Massey Ferguson. Yeah, it's a, it's a newer line for us, and definitely a newer line for me. I'm uh, probably more familiar with the Mahindras than I am with the Masseys, but I'm, okay. I'm learning. Masseys have got a lot more options than what Mahindra does. Okay, so the Mahindras are a little more entry a little more level. Cut, yeah, a little, well, a little more cut and dried. There's okay. just not so many different uh, levels and, and different options you can get on them now. Start with the Mahindras, I guess. Okay. This is a 25 series for Mahindra, and we've just changed that now to the 26 series. Okay, so, so the, tw the 26 series is a replacement for the 25, or is right, it a yeah. just higher a, end, or it's just, just a, a new model. model? Just a new model. Okay, well, yeah. let's look at the 26s. Yeah. We'll not... So 38 horsepower with Mahindra, the, the two numbers on the back of the tractor. Okay. That give you your horsepower. And that's an engine horsepower number there. Correct. You're going to lose probably, I don't know, 5% or so. Yeah. Okay. So what they've did with, done with the 20, 2638 Hydrostat, got pedal for forward, pedal for reverse. The loader valves here on the fender. So the 26, they put a new seat on it. Okay. Which is adjustable for your weight as you Is that what that. this yep. what this adjustment yep. is? That's what that does. It does feel a little nicer than the one I sat on at the farm show. Yeah, looks nicer. Uh, so here you got your four-wheel drive lever. Right. Lift straight up on that. Okay. PTO here to turn your PTO mm -hmm. on the rear. You've got a rear uh, differential lock there for your okay. heel. Now I assume it's multi-range transmission. Oh, that's yep. on the other side. Three-speed transmission on the other side there. Okay. And then your hydro with the two individual pedals. Uh-huh. Yep, tilt wheel. And then your hazard lights and your lighting here for the your okay. headlights and work lights. Also have on the PTO the ability to to turn that PTO off and on right here on the dash once you have it fired up in the back. So once you have the PTO on and you're running a bush hog or something, if you want to turn it off and on, you can do it right here rather than Why would shifting it just that again. It's quicker, like a yeah, an emergency kind of thing? Let's or? say you're crossing over a gravel driveway or something, you want to shut it off for a couple minutes and pop okay. it back on, just instead of reaching down there and, and wrestling with it. So what do you think in general about uh, turning the PTO off and on at, at high RPMs? Yeah, everybody's got a different idea on that. Um, you know, I, my, my thing, I always kind of did it about mid horsepower and then slowly increase my speed if it was okay. a bush hog. So yeah, you do need to push your brake in when you start. Okay, does it need to be in neutral or anything? No, I think you're good there. I sell quite a few of the Mahindras. Yeah, we've been averaging probably probably eight to ten a month. Wow. What what size do you sell the most of? Seems like our sweet spot is uh, between thirty and sixty. Okay. Um, but we do have I have been selling quite a few of the higher horsepower, eighty-five uh, horsepower stuff too. And I think it's hobby farmers and guys running little cattle operations and that okay. kind of thing guys that are working with round bales and that kind of thing. Okay. You want to try it? Sure. After all, I'm not supposed to be driving today. <laughs> I just had a medical procedure today. Just a preventative or pre-screening. Yeah, the colonoscopy, you know, the over 50 thing. I guess a public service announcement. If you're over 50 and you haven't taken one of those colonoscopies, do it. It's no problem at all for the procedure, but the prep, well, it wasn't that bad, Dave. Have you, have you done it, Dave? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no. Oh, <laughs> and you're over 50? I'm, uh, I'm the speed limit. Uh-oh. Oh, you need to do it. 
Yeah, it's time, Dave. I just did it today, and, and they told me I couldn't drive the rest of the day. So in typical tractor time with Tim fashion, I have disobeyed doctor's orders. Well, I drove here. Yeah, you drove here. I just drove the Mikey the Mahindra. You said you couldn't drive a bulldozer. That's not a bulldozer. It's not a bulldozer, is it? No. Well, you better drive them. Okay. I did mention to her you got a quick release on the bucket for skid, yeah, steps, skid steer. Skid steer quick attach. Stuff. How about a third function? Is that available? It's, a, it's possible, yeah. You can add okay. that. Okay. Oh, how does she slide the seat up? Over there on your left side. Right. Oh. Okay. And, then, and, uh, and does it, the tilt wheel goes way down. Did yeah. you notice that? Which is your most popular model of the Mahindras? Uh, we're selling a lot of, you know, a lot of higher horsepower, 40s and up. Oh, really? Yeah. So more of those, maybe even than the subcompacts. Yes. Right now we are. Yeah. Okay. So uh, larger horsepower than what we're looking at here in the 38. You're talking the 55s 50, and on. Yeah, 55s and up. Yeah. Okay. We sold two 85s in the last few weeks, and that tractor is available also in a cab, the same tractor. We should probably uh, climb in and look at a cab model and just uh, see how quiet it is and that sure. kind of same thing. I really think we're going to want an open station and uh, I've said several times that for our viewers I think the cab is the best choice. But we like to do a lot of interacting with each other while we're on the videos and we also like to do a lot of interacting with the customer. Right. Because we do a lot of little kind of landscaping DIY kind of jobs and we just feel distant from the customer, distant from each other if we're in a cab. That's gotcha. it. It aisles nice and quietly. Yeah. I'd have to get used to the rabbit and turtle being backwards. Is it that way on all Mahindras or just No, it just depends one? on the model, yeah. Okay. We can go over and look at one of the cabs if you okay. want. Okay, let's do that. What's this for? That's a cutout. There's another model that has a shuttle shift. Okay. Mahindras would do that. You can, you'll see a lot of the parts that will go from model to model. That they're, they're okay. dashboards, that kind of thing. Now, now is this a 38 model? You said there's a 45 model. Is it physically bigger? No. A couple down here. So it's the same size. 25, 45. Okay, so this is the 25 version. Hey, I see a huge improvement between the 25 and the 2600 series right now. Assuming this is the same, Dave, uh, the 25 series has the joystick up here. Mm -hmm. And the 26, they've it, it moved does, it. It does, on, yeah, it does, they did move it and relocated it onto the fender. And you can see the difference in the seat here. Yeah. Very nice improvement in the seat there, Christy. So this is 45 horsepower and a shuttle shift. Okay. So there's that cutout. Oh, okay. Um, Other than that, pretty much. But it's the physically same. the same size. Yeah. Much of a price difference in these, or I guess they don't make. They still uh, make these, right? Yeah, they still make the 25 series too. Uh, it depends again on horsepower and what you're what you're looking for. But like for shuttle like horsepower. Yeah, shuttle sh shifts a little cheaper than the hydro. Yeah. Same tractor with the cab. It really looks like the interior is is pretty much unchanged as well. Maybe a little more plastic or. Yeah. Whatever. So you're right. Your, your equipment above, you get your heating and air system up above there, wipers, that kind of thing. Okay, so here we are inside the 2638 with the cab. Contrasting with, say, the Coyote or the Deer or the Kubota, the cab version of the Mahindra is very, very similar to the open station version. So much so that it looks like just a cab was set on top of it. We go wide open in this cab and it, it gets much louder, at least it seems louder to me compared to say the Coyote or the uh, Kubota. Now it's got full air conditioning, which I need to find here, but uh, somebody else had the heat on because it's just now got spring. Plenty of space here in the cockpit for me. Overall, uh, a nice tractor. I think a little more entry level uh, than some of the others we've been looking at. This tractor is manufactured by TYM with the engine apparently being supplied by Mahindra. We'll talk to Dave about that. I'm stuck! There we go. You have lights forward and backward on the cab too, so you got good visibility all the way around. It's got a rear wiper on the back of the cab also. Okay. Now, my understanding is that these Mahindras have uh, no DPF. No, no diesel particular filter, yep. So really, no, the Tier 4 requires no more maintenance, right. say, than even the little 25 right, horse. exactly. Yep. First thing you do is look like you pull that, pull that, that guard brush guard. Forward. Yep. There we go. Yeah, no DPF, and it's uh, much more compact than some of the others.
It's your air cleaner up here in the front where it's easy to get to. Yeah, battery can be reached. And you can release that air cleaner right here with that rubber strap and then yeah. you can bring this up out to get to the battery. The side panels pop off so you can get to the rest of the engine. Okay, this enough. all comes off? Yep. This seems a little easier access to me than some of the other brands we're seeing. Some of them have the side panels that come up with the hood. Yeah. And, and I find those to, to make it kind of so it's hard to get in there. Mm -hmm. And with this, if the, especially since the side panels come off, you just feel like you got a little better visibility. Now, hopefully I never have to get in here much other than to maybe put new oil in when I change the oil, but you never know. Anything else that we need to know about something? Well, Hendrix got the best warranty in the industry. Two years and everything, seven on the drivetrain. Okay. And that's the, the best warranty going. Okay, two years on everything, seven years then on the drivetrain, which would be the engine and the hydrostatic transmission or shuttle shift or things like that. One thing I notice is it's a little more primitive than some of the tractors we've looked at. There's no telescoping arms. Um, they've got the same uh, turnbuckles that we have on Johnny rather than the fancier turnbuckles with the pins here. You know, this is this is a a little bit more of an entry level tractor. It's not a it's not a high end tractor, perhaps like we were comparing to the Grand El Kubotas or or the super equipped Coyote. <laughs> Uh, this is more of a, a get her done type tractor. Now, what's something like this run? With the cab, you're probably in the 38 range. And that's before we get the pencil really sharpened, but right. it's less than MSRP. Right, and, Ma that. and Mahindra always has different programs on where they'll have some incentives for, for purchase and money back, lower interest rate kind of things. It just depends on the, okay. on the tractor, and different models have different incentives. Okay. And they change those each month. So you got Massey Ferguson's as well, right? I do. There's a, a row of them right there. Well, there they are. Now, Dave's gone inside for a minute, but he's going to show us the Massey next. Now, he's got a limited supply of Massey Premium Series, and there's a good reason for that. Massey's introducing a engine that doesn't have DPF either, just like the Mahindra's. Not the same engine, but the same features. And so they're going to be introducing that in the next season here. So they don't have a huge supply of these premium 1700 series. So but we're going to go look at a cab version that he does have on hand. So this is a 1759, 59 horsepower. I think the biggest thing in the difference between the Masseys and the Mahindra is I think Masseys are finished a little nicer um, and just a, a little bit more comfortable, especially the cab tractors. So this looks like a four speed. Yeah, you got a four speed transmission. You're, is this a shuttle shift? It is a shuttle, yep. Okay. And you got a four-wheel drive lever here. You've uh -huh. got your uh, high and low gear here. And this is your PTO for mid-mount and for uh, rear PTO. Okay. And so, uh, so explain this again. We really have eight forward speeds. We have four here, and then a and then a two a yeah, two speed here. Right. You got high and okay. low gear and four speed, and then your shuttle. Okay. So is is the high and low? Let's say I put this in first. Is high one slower than low two? No, low, low gear is going to be slower, then you move to the high speed. So it's one, two, three, four low, and then one, one two, two, three, three four, four high. high. Okay, that's yeah. what I was trying to ask. Yeah, um, okay. Loader valve there on your right. That's handy, it feels comfortable. And then you've got your control for your three point there to your right also. Okay. Your three levers there. Gear. Yep. That one up that there on the top that you had put your hand on a minute ago, that's for a set of valves on the rear of the tractor. Above you to the right there, you got your wipers and headlights for the cab. And then your heating air up there also. Spot for radio. They got the, the speakers there, but no radio. What you're saying is the consumer has a lot of choice as to what. They got different transmissions. They can choose a radio or uh -huh. not. Right. This would be the tilt. Yep. So with a shuttle, I can just go quickly forward to reverse. Like Correct. That, right? Yep. Christy, this will be new for you. This will have a clutch, right? Yeah, and you'll need to be in neutral. <laughs> So you've only had the Masseys for how long? Like we started as a Massey dealer in last last June, so okay. coming up on a year. And we've been selling a lot of the little GC tractors, the little 17 series, the 105s and the 110s, the little backhoe tractor. Oh, oh yeah. So why did you pick up Massey if you already had the Hendrix? Uh, they wanted to get into some of the hay equipment, which we can get that through Massey. Oh, okay. And also higher horsepower. 
I see. So how high does uh, Mahindra go? Mahindra's uh, 105 horsepower. And Massey, you know, you can get into big farm tractors. And right. Hundreds right. of horsepower. Right. Okay, how do I... There's a lever yeah, over here. The side there to the left. There you go. Okay. So you've got a, a high and a low gear here. Okay. And then you've got one through four here. So you're going to pick a high and a low in that gear. I just start out in, you know, low two or something. Okay. This is a shuttle shift, so you lift this up, forward is forward, reverse is reverse. Okay. So there's no... Now you can do that without clutching, right? Correct, yep. But to start, you need to have the clutch push down, your clutch just, down like an old, just like in the old days, Christy. Yeah. Okay. And it does have a foot throttle over there also. I mean, it, it seemed geared very low to me. Uh, even the higher speed, uh, even the high, I was in the high range in like third and it still didn't seem very fast. Which is depending on what you're doing with the tractor, you know, if you're sure. If, 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 if getting tractors that size is going to be a bit better benefit to have it the low, low end if, to pull better. Absolutely. So, so tell us a little about that baler. That's an 1838 uh, square baler been around in Heston, New Mexico, Ferguson for years. It's just a very reliable baler. A lot of our viewers are, are into the idea of small hay farming, uh, and square bales seems to be the way to go for them. I think, um, yeah, I think if they're, you know, easier to handle for, for smaller applications. Yeah. Um, we do have a couple of round balers here, too. I know one of the complaints they're always talking about is trying to find help to, to, to pick the hay up and get it back up, okay. know, up in the barn and up on the wagon. And, yeah, the high school helps not around like it used not, to be. Not interested. They're gaming anymore, aren't they? So now with round balers, you can switch over your bale spear and do everything with your tractor. You can, actually, in the in the 4707 tractor, and you can actually adjust how fast it shifts from forward to reverse. So if you want to do it really quickly or at a slower rate, it'll shift itself kind of, which is kind of nice. There is an advantage to the shuttle shift. It takes a little more practice to get used to, but it's going to get you more power to the ground. Oh, okay. So if you want to pull a ground engaging implement, you're going to be able to pull more than with the Correct. hydrostatic yeah. tractor. Correct. Like Less this. moving parts too. It seems, this seems natural for it to be here. Yeah, it does seem like it's the right place. Yeah, it seems like, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. Now that cab was quiet. It was clear that yes. this cab tractor is a is a different tractor than an open station tractor. Whereas with the Mahindra, it felt like it was the same tractor with maybe just windows stuck on the top of it. Yeah, uh, it's it, definitely better insulation. It is quieter cab, and, it, and I think the engine in this tractor is a little quieter than the Mahindra also. Okay, now this is a 59. Um, physically very similar to say the 42 and the 49 physical size? Mm -hmm. Yes. The new Massey's coming out, the same horsepower ratings along the line and everything, just gonna be, uh, no DPF. Correct. Right. So a different yeah. engine, but the rest of the tractor is yeah, going to look the same engine. They're using the 26 series. You're going to put in the 17 series. Okay. So that's so that's why we didn't order a bunch of the other tractors because you know sure. obviously not having the DPF is an advantage. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a that's a concern that a lot of our viewers have, and you know uh, the regen is is annoying. Sometimes you get ready to turn it off, and it's a forced regen if you haven't kept your RPMs up. Exactly. And, I don't think we're interested in the economy tractors because of the, the feature sets, but that's closer to the size, except we'd love to have about 45 horses in that size. <laughs> so the only other tractor I'll show you real quick is a uh, Southern Mahindra over here. Okay. And this is a 4550, so a 45 series, 50 horsepower tractor. Uh, it's old school, it's shifting gears. You got a okay. high, high and a low gear and a four speed transmission. Okay. Um, but you do get a set of remotes on the rear. And it's got great lifting uh, capability and around 3,000 pounds. And we're selling a lot of these tractors that are going kind of down into the Bloomington area and guys that are, that are doing some small farming, little, little cattle operations, that kind of thing. Uh, okay, they, really, so they like the gear drive and they like the lifting ability on it. Okay, so this is more of a brute force tractor, an economy tractor. Uh, yep. And it's a current model, right? Yep, 18. An 18 model, and it's 50 horsepower roughly? Yep. At the engine? Yes, sir. And does it have DPF? No. It does not. No. So none of the Mahindras, up to 85 horse, I believe right. is what you said. Yeah, 105 they have definitely. 
who who makes this one? This doesn't look just just on this, the surface. It doesn't look comes, like it's a. Yeah, an, this comes out of India. This tractor. Okay, so this is not a TYM tractor. No. This is this, this is, is a true Mahindra. Mahindra old school. Yeah. Okay. Which I think is really kind of their sweet spot. Build these very big heavy tractors. You see a lot of a lot of metal, a lot of cast back here, a lot of weight, which is adding to your lifting. And yeah. There's your remotes I was talking about. It's adjustable three point. Just pull a pin here. Things roll up and down for this side. Yeah, and then these are a little bit these are a little bit nicer here with the pins yeah, instead of the turnbuckles. Right. Yep. Got a suspension seat on it. That's I call it a working man's tractor. Very, very yeah. reliable. There's what does one of these run? Well, this tractor, equipped roughly like this with a loader and yeah this tractor you're probably low 20s 23 24 50 horsepower tractor in the low 20s that's uh that's a lot of tractor for the money what's cool about this tractor in my mind is this is the only safety switch on it it's right here for this neutral <laughs> position so it won't start if you're in low or high you need to be in neutral that's it wow no, no more electronics Right here, Christy. We've got a four wheel drive lever here, a PTO lever here, rear uh, wheel diff on your right foot, and we also okay. have a uh, lot of uh, good old parking brakes. It truly is old school. You actually have to find a reverse, Christy. Well, let's see if we can make a move without me running over your toe. Let's see, is there a parking brake on? I kind of like it because there's not a lot of electronics on it. There's not a lot of stuff to go wrong. Yeah. It's got a ton of power. So where do the other tractors come from? Are they made in the U.S. now or put together in the U.S.? Final, final assemblies in the U.S. But we have a uh, series, a couple series from Japan, uh, some from South Korea, and then the, and then from India. Okay. Unfortunately, none of the tractors under 100 horsepower are built in the U.S. I think he's trying to run over me. He is. You know, this is a lot of tractor for the money. Yeah. It really is. Um, but it's very entry level on the features. It's going to be brute force. It's going to be a loader tractor that will get the job done for you. It's going to have a good strong three-point hitch. And if you're on a budget and you need 50 horsepower, this is probably a great choice. If I'm bush hogging or something in that big field up there, this is what I use. No, I don't think it's the right tractor for us, but I think there's a lot of our viewers that would find this to be, uh, yeah. you know, a compelling size and, and a compelling value. Right. Now, it's a little harder to use a loader tractor when it's a gear drive because you do a lot of back and forth, back and <laughs> forth with the loader. And doing that with a gear drive is a little harder. The shuttle shift makes that a lot nicer. It's a good compromise, right. probably. Yep. But it's a lot more expensive, as you said. Sure. Dave, uh, I really appreciate you showing us around today. Absolutely. You came highly recommended. One of our viewers said we needed to come check you out. He said that uh, you had sold him a tractor. Okay, great. I'll have to look up his name, or else you'll have to look it up on our great. channel. But uh, we really appreciate your time, and thanks for showing us the Mahindra and the Massey Ferguson. And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. I like it, but I just have to get used to it. That's well. The shuttle shift would be different, but we would we would opt for the hydrostatic drive. Oh, that's an option. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I I thought it would be interesting to you to see what a shuttle shift was like, but we wouldn't. More like embarrassing to me. Okay, I thought I would embarrass you in front of the whole world. Yes, thank you. With the shuttle shift.